a recent problem that I found in some of my students is how to place the left thumb on the neck of the violin. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is correct, what is not correct, and what is the best technique that will help you play better. Stick around to the end of the video, you don't wanna miss this. Hi there, my name is Eric, I'm a violinist. I do a lot of violin tutorials, product reviews, and other violin-related content on this channel. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. Helps me out as a content creator to provide more violin videos for you. So this is a very new issue that has come across with one of my students when it comes to thumb placement. You know, there are various ways on how to approach thumb placement on the left hand in particular. And uh, we're gonna talk about that today and what are some advantages, some disadvantages to some techniques I'm about to explain. I want to be clear up front that this is not a one size fits all technique. There are other methodologies that require the thumb closer to the first finger right over here. If I can place, there you go. The first finger and the thumb are kind of working as a team, but there are also some school of thought that allow the thumb to be closer to the second finger. Is the thumb appropriate closer to the first finger for you or closer to the second finger? Well, I think it depends based on experience from what I've seen in students is the size of your hand. And it also depends on your comfort level. However, I would not suggest that the thumb be close to the second finger every single time. And what we don't want is the thumb to be going all the way across the third finger because then you will actually build some tension. As a matter of fact, you can see some tension building up in my left hand right over here. So technically speaking, for, for the Suzuki beginner or for the adult beginner, a safe place to start is making sure that the thumb is right near the first finger. If you happen to be on the smaller side in terms of your hand, in terms of the width of your hand and the length of your hand, then you know talk to your teacher and it could be possible where your second finger and your thumb are right across from each other. This serves a few purposes when it comes to the second finger thumb placement. Because some students have a short pinky, what will happen is that teachers may suggest that the thumb will go forward a little bit so that way the, the entire frame of the hand will be closer to the pinky. And I'm gonna actually go on this side so that way you can see. You're, you're not gonna be able to see my thumb from this angle, but when the thumb right over here goes near the second finger, most students who have short pinkies will be able to reach the pinky. And what will happen is that the first finger will then have to reach back. Now, I wanna point out that it's easier to reach back for a finger than to reach up for a finger. And that is why many students oftentimes, or many teachers, I should say, go closer to the second finger with the thumb placement because a lot of students' pinkies are quite short and they're not at full length yet when it comes to full-size violin playing but it may be different for some students. For instance, you know, I have a student right now that has nice long fingers and a good with hand, perfect violin fingers, and all she needs to do is just keep the, the thumb all the way back. And then she's, she has the length for her fingers to reach every single note on the fingerboard this way. This is not a one size fits all technique, ladies and gentlemen. Some students may want the thumb close to the first finger. Some might want it close to the second finger. However, it is at the discretion of the teacher based on his or her you know, methodology and pedagogy that you should really, you should really grasp onto that. Again, you know, pinkies are uh, very difficult to reach you know, for a beginner, especially when we get to Suzuki Book One, Perpetual Motion. That is really clear that it's very difficult for that fourth finger strength to really build up and it actually will take some time because naturally the third finger and the second finger are pretty powerful when it comes to putting it on the fingerboard. Now we're going to talk about some of the pros and some of the cons as to why the thumb could be beneficial for some students, you know, the thumb closer to the second finger, and what are the cons to this? The pros obviously is that you can reach farther with your other fingers, your third finger, your fourth finger, obviously it's a lot easier. 
The one downside to this technique that I have found amongst beginner students who want to try this is that once the thumb creeps up to the second finger, all of a sudden the entire hand starts creeping up. I'm not sure why that is. I think it's because there is no blockade yet and there's nothing to keep the hand really steady. Sometimes I like to you know, put a sharp pencil as a joke. <laughs> Maybe it's my, my evil teacher inside me that I put a sharp pencil and I, I put a rubber band and actually I'm gonna leave a card up here so that way you can see um, that particular technique that I use. Is it effective? Probably not, but it's kind of fun to kind of torture my students in that way. So I have a sharp pencil right over here. That way the hand won't be uh, tempted to move up and also the wrist won't be able to move up as well. Do this at your, at your discretion. This is just a fun little game that I use with my students. And again, I'm gonna leave a card up here for that video that I uh, just talked about. All in all, what you want is to make sure that you have full control over the fingerboard. And for me, my hands are quite large, so I don't have to get that thumb closer to the second finger. Some famous violinist, such as Hilary Hahn, is actually famous for having that thumb closer to the second finger. If you watch her videos, if you watch really closely to that left hand, that's what she does. But the question you might be asking, where should I even begin? Well, I would begin with the thumb being really close to the first finger first. And then you talk to your teacher or or whoever that you are taking violin lessons from to see if this is a good idea to bring the thumb up as an experiment to see if you have a little bit more control and also for the fingers to be able to reach farther up in the fingerboard. This is not so relevant in uh, third position, but this is, I'm talking like first position um, hand frame right now. I wanna leave a question over to you. Do you leave the thumb closer to the first finger or do you leave the thumb closer to the second finger? For me, it's the first finger, but I have a couple students that has benefited from the thumb going to the second finger. I have a couple of times have to tell them that their hand is kind of creeping up and their intonation is getting sharper and sharper. But again, that is a case by case basis and I wanna know how you play your violin on the left hand. So leave a comment down below, let's get this conversation going. And I hope this left hand technique thumb placement has really helped you in this video. And um, I really wanna get to know the community and leave a comment down below, what other videos do you want on the channel? Because I'm here for you, I wanna create as many useful videos for you as possible. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found value in it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. It also helps me out as a content creator to provide more videos for you. Also, be sure to check out some other videos that I have on the channel right on the side of the video over here. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.